Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Wednesday out there. Hope we're all having a wonderful kind of middle of the work week here and I know it is hot out there. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to continue. So uh, I do apologize about that. Unfortunately, I can't control it. Although some people seem to think I can, uh, which is always an interesting conversation to have. Uh, but anyway, again, it's hot out there. That's really the big time story right now for a lot of folks uh, that we're seeing. But we are seeing some pretty strong storms this afternoon, uh, kind of rolling on through kind of sections of Lake Erie, rolling off there uh, into sections of Ohio and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. So again, some strong storms out there to talk about. Also a lot going on in the tropics, but uh, it's what is kind of to come in the tropics that is uh, what is going to be really interesting over the next week or so. And we'll really have to keep our eyes on the Gulf of Mexico, especially for you folks here in the southeastern part of the United States, where things could get kind of a little hairy uh, going into the middle of next week. So again, a lot to talk about, and we will definitely get to all of that. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so and like the video if you like it, as that does help the channel out a lot and helps us reach more people. So uh, again, kind of just say that at the beginning of every video, but just figure I continue the tradition here. Uh, with that said, though, let's go ahead and jump into your forecast. So uh, taking a look at satellite imagery here over the Atlantic and kind of the eastern part of the country here, east of the Rockies. Again, a couple things to note. We'll start back home. This is a big complex of some pretty strong storms, uh, really lake effect storms, quite honestly. Again, rolling off the Great Lakes here into sections of Ohio and Pennsylvania this afternoon. Uh, that bringing with us some pretty strong winds as well as a bit of a tornado threat. Nothing and too crazy though. Now, the other big story right now in the Atlantic, this is Tropical Storm Franklin right over the top of Hispaniola right now, dumping a whole bunch of rain there uh, for a lot of folks there. So definitely concerned about flooding over there. Now, uh, over the next couple of days, uh, this is going to meander off over back into the open Atlantic, and that's when we are expecting this to turn into our next hurricane. So uh, again, definitely has a chance to, uh, you know, become quite strong and could impact our friends in Bermuda, as well as potentially uh, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia up into Canada. So uh, not too much of a direct threat here to the lower 48, but still uh, important for us to discuss here. Uh, outside of that, we're going to have, again, a lot of question marks in the Gulf over the next week. Uh, and you can already see kind of just this general spin out here in the Gulf. Um, that is going to kind of continue that idea. And uh, as we go through the next week or so, and just this big blob of energy down here will eventually get up uh, and have a chance to develop into something potentially uh, that will be quite interesting to talk about here on the channel. So uh, again, keeping an eye on that. All right, so bringing things back into the lower 48 here. Again, the heat is the big story. A whole bunch of excessive heat warnings out there for uh, places from Minneapolis all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So again, all up and down the Mississippi River Valley, plenty hot enough to say it is the middle of August here, and uh, we're all really feeling that out there. Now, we are getting some relief of that uh, up into the northeast and the east coast today where we've had uh, some drier air kind of move on in down the backside of the Appalachian chain. That has helped to uh, excuse me, allow things to feel a bit nicer. Here in Charlotte, it has felt really nice outside, almost a bit fall-like, although uh, still a touch warm to call it fall-like, uh, but still, again, relief compared to what you folks are seeing out there further to the west. Now, in terms of the rain we're seeing, again, we're just getting this onslaught of moisture off of uh, Lake Erie here, and uh, this is continuing to funnel down into areas between Erie, Pennsylvania, and Cleveland, Ohio. So, Again, some very strong storms out here as well, kind of rolling on through. So definitely make sure you have a way to get those warnings, but also flooding becoming a risk here uh, as this rain just continues to pile up and go over these same areas. So uh, while a lot of us are stuck in, you know, a bit of this very just dry heat wave, a uh, very small section of the country is actually cashed in on a little bit too much rain right now. So again, just always interesting to see how that unfolds. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the next couple of days here on radar imagery and in terms of the dew points, as that is very important how it feels outside this time of year. But we'll start with radar. So uh, again, right now, all thanks to this big dome of high pressure, we're getting some very strong flow around that here, kind of across the lakes, and that is allowing some precipitation uh, to fire up. And again, some of that causing very heavy rainfall, including some flooding out there. So Again, expecting that to continue uh, over the next couple of days, and uh, the general theme is we're going to get these big complexes of storms to form out here and eventually try to work south and um, potentially south-southwest even, kind of wrapping around this high pressure. Now, uh, the forecast becomes very difficult once these roll off the lake, uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, these storms are just very tough to predict, and uh, we've seen that plenty this summer. Uh, this could completely fall apart after it gets off the lake. It could hold together pretty uh, for a pretty long time and potentially get as far south and west as a place like Nashville or even uh, move down into the Appalachian chain some. So again, just uh, it's very tough to forecast these, but just know uh, 
uh, if you're kind of on the edge of this high pressure, we do have that chance of some strong complexes of storms rolling on through over the next couple of days. So could potentially see one of those roll on through during the early morning hours tomorrow in a place like Cincinnati through uh, much of Kentucky before that one fizzles out and we get another area to develop tomorrow afternoon and evening once again off of Lake Erie and that once again will move inland. So uh, right now, if I had to say the places that have the best chance of rainfall, one obviously being where we're seeing it now, outside of there, um, kind of down the Ohio River Valley a little bit, as well as up into the northeast. So if you're kind of just in this general bubble right here I have drawn, expect at least maybe a little bit of rain, uh, but for some folks, a good bit more of that over the next couple of days as these, again, waves of precipitation roll in off the lakes uh, over the next couple of days. And again, just to kind of loop that one more time for you, you can see how that's likely going to unfold. Alrighty, so we're talking about dew points now, and again, this kind of just controls how muggy it feels outside, and uh, again, it's absolutely brutal out there up and down the Mississippi River Valley in a place like St. Louis up towards Des Moines. Again, really just about as bad as it can get this time of year, with dew points getting up near 80 and temperatures getting up well into the 90s, so those feels like temperatures are getting well past 110 degrees, so again, uh, that's why we have those excessive heat warnings out for you folks. All right, so again, uh, we're seeing some of that drier air here in the east coast, east of the Appalachian chain, specifically up into the northeast, but that has even crashed all the way down the I-95 corridor into South Carolina. Now, I do expect as we go into tomorrow, those dew points to once again climb back up and things to become a bit more muggy and uncomfortable as we go through the next 48 hours or so. And that general idea will really hold on for a lot of folks uh, as we move through much of the start of this weekend. Now, again, that dew point forecast is a bit difficult as well and will likely play a big factor in how hot it gets during kind of the peak of this heat wave over the next couple of days. So tomorrow, again, it's going to be very hot, especially those places that have already been seeing that excessive heat, but once again, heating back up here into the southeast and mid-Atlantic. Now, again, the big caveat here to the forecast on exactly how hot we're going to get is that dew point. So um, the lower the dew point, likely the hotter it's going to get. It's just easier to warm up the air whenever there's less humidity and less moisture in the air. The more moisture there is, um, the more difficult it is for us to get up well past 100 degrees. So uh, right now, National Weather Service going for highs into the mid 90s into the southeast and again highs getting up past 110 for you folks uh, back out here into the southern Great Plains. Now Friday is going to probably be the peak of this Friday into Saturday at least uh, for a lot of folks here into the southern half of the country. Uh, National Weather Service going with 100 degrees in Charlotte on Friday. Uh, definitely could see that. We could even you know overachieve that a little bit if the dew points stay lower. We very easily could hit 105 degrees for some places here in the southeast. Uh, but again Expect, nonetheless, no matter what the reading on the thermometer is, it's going to be hot and potentially muggy depending on where you're at. Alrighty, so taking a look here at future radar kind of past this and what we're expecting. Again, we're having these rounds of storms just kind of wrapping around this high pressure, but uh, there is some signs going into next week that we might get some sort of cold front to kind of try to start working into the lower 48 from Canada starting as early as this weekend. Now, uh, unfortunately, the models have been struggling with this a little bit on picking up exactly how far south and east it's going to get, and likely it's going to get caught up a little bit at times. So it might push kind of far south, uh, hold up a little bit, and we might have to wait for a reinforcing shot of cold air to really get it to move south. Uh, that'll really be the big story we have to track in terms of temperatures over the next couple of days. But again, just know going into next week, I'm expecting some sort of cold front to try to work on through and bringing with that obviously cooler and drier air, but also potentially the formation of a bit more rain, which would be very useful to a lot of folks. All right, so looking at temperatures, again, going to continue to be very hot, um, especially this Friday and Saturday before, again, we potentially get that first round of cold air or cooler air, I should say, to try to work on through. You'll notice here going into our Saturday afternoon, kind of a bit of a line you can draw out here of some cooler air trying to work its way on through, but that unfortunately gets kind of stalled a little bit uh, before potentially another round of cooler air kind of tries to swing on through going into the middle of next week. And that one could really make it pretty far south and east, uh, really helping to bring some more fall-like temperatures uh, potentially to start September. So that'd be a little festive uh, for some folks, depending, again, on the intensity and the timing and all that. But uh, we'll definitely iron out those details in the medium to long run. Another great way to look at cold fronts here is the dew point map. And again, uh, very muggy out there right now. But as we go into this weekend, again, a kind of a surge of some drier air trying to push in from the north. Uh, we'll hope that can make it far enough south to uh, really improve things for us folks. Uh, but 
I do think it at least will get some relief for especially people up in the northern Great Plains and northeast, but the big question mark is will it get as far south as maybe this is projecting and really knock that uh, humidity dome down as far south and east as the Carolinas? That is still to be seen and we will iron out those details again as we get closer to next week. Alrighty, so um, now let's go ahead and switch to the tropics, which again is a pretty big story, and I'm going to go ahead and do some cleaning up on the map. We're not really going to discuss these two areas right now because, quite honestly, they don't have much of a threat to the United States or really anybody right now, and uh, even if they do develop, likely will become fish storms. What we're really going to focus in on is Franklin here, and also what is potentially to come in the Gulf of Mexico over the next week. So again, uh, that will be the big topics here in the tropics. So let's go ahead and start with Franklin because, again, that has the most immediate impacts right now and we just know the most about it so it'll be a little bit easier to talk about so again right over really the Dominican Republic right now bringing a whole lot of rain and some gusty winds for those folks out there uh, now as we go into the overnight hours this will once again re-emerge over the Atlantic Ocean and bringing with that um, the chance for it to continue to increase in strength so expecting this to kind of meander kind of slowly really over this area of the Atlantic kind of right here through the Bermuda Triangle if you will um, over the next uh, couple of days. Now, going into this weekend is whenever it has a chance to become a hurricane, and that will be really just to the south or south, uh, south, let me see directions here, south, southwest of Bermuda, uh, but pretty well offshore of the coastal United States. So, again, could become quite strong out here, and we've got to watch that track as it could get very close to Bermuda. And of course, uh, we don't want that for our folks out there, so uh, we'll hope for the best, and of course, send our prayers for anyone out in the path of Franklin here. Now, luckily, our models, um, again, keep this pretty far away from the United States. You'll notice this is the Outer Banks of North Carolina. This is kind of the Delmarva up here. And you'll notice there's plenty of space between even our furthest uh, west model runs. Now, again, most of our models kind of bring this in between the United States and Bermuda. Some bring it right over Bermuda. And again, it could be quite strong. So we'll have to watch that. Hopefully, you know, it stays far enough away from Bermuda that impacts will be limited and it will be more of just uh, kind of waves and, uh, you know, things of that sort. All right, so that's Franklin. Again, not expecting too much of um, anything that is too big of a deal out of him right now, but uh, let's go ahead and switch our attention here uh, to the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So, sorry, I had to uh, think about what I was going to say there. Uh, so, again, the big story here in the Gulf is that area that we kind of saw spinning away over here. This is going to continue to just uh, stay over here. It's a bit of a gyre, or what I mean by that is just a big circulation. Uh, it's just got a lot of thunderstorm activity, and it's just kind of hanging out over uh, this area of the extreme north uh, Western Caribbean here. Now, eventually going into uh, later this weekend and into early next week, that tries to get out over the Gulf. So uh, you'll notice here we go. This is uh, that circulation at the very bottom of your screen here. And I should add, this is our European model, which is a pretty reliable model we use pretty frequently. But again, going into Monday, this potentially kind of tries to get its act together a bit and could um, shoot the gap here between the Yucatan and Cuba, which would get that into the very warm and very unstable Gulf of Mexico. So uh, again, you'll notice going into Monday afternoon of uh, this coming week uh, would likely be over the Gulf. And if it does get out here, very much has the potential to strengthen into potentially a hurricane even and move towards Florida, the west coast of Florida that is. So um, again, anytime you see this and it's within a week on a uh, very trustworthy model like our European model, you really got to keep an eye on it. And again, uh, we know the Gulf of Mexico is notorious for spinning things up very quickly and a lot of things undergo very rapid intensification out here. So we really have to keep an eye on this. In fact, um, even more so than Franklin is right now, this is a bit of a priority for our folks here uh, in the United States. So again, this afternoon's uh, European model run definitely bringing some noise uh, to the scene here and of course has um, you know a lot of concern with it. Now, uh, to show you the flip side of this, the GFS model shows a bit of a different scenario. So again, has this circulation or uh, kind of area getting out over the Gulf or uh, the Caribbean here going into early next week. A bit delayed here on um, the GFS. It's more of a Tuesday event. And you'll also notice this is that same area, same general area, but much weaker. So uh, you'll notice kind of just has a lot of dry air on this side of it and uh, is really one-sided and just not very strong. So um, you know, the GFS brings a much weaker system into the Florida Peninsula going into the middle of next week, which of course would be nicer to see. Now, either way, what I feel confident in is we're going to see some rain out here next week and potentially return to some uh, muggy tropical air mass uh, into the extreme southeastern part of the country, but especially Florida uh, going into uh, the middle of next week. All right, so showing you these ensemble members, we'll start, uh, excuse me, start with the... Um, 
European uh, ensembles. So again, these are just all ensemble members of the uh, main model we just looked at. Uh, so again, they're pretty confident that we get some kind of system here to develop and a lot of ensemble members picking up on potentially a strong storm system even here in the Gulf going towards the middle of next week. And of course that could cause some issues and most models bring that right over the Florida Peninsula. Uh, and again, if that were to happen, we would have some pretty big impacts and would definitely be the biggest impacts we've had from any tropical system so far this year. So definitely need to watch that. Now taking a look at the GFS ensemble members, you'll notice um, a lot less here showing up. Definitely some members showing some kind of tropical system over near Florida, but most ensemble members just kind of have that gyre or that big circulation just kind of uh, moving out over um, kind of the Yucatan uh, section there of uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So again, a lot less strong and generally just more of a tropical wave here on the GFS model. So again, definitely need to watch that as we go over the next week. Um, and uh, again, a lot of noise out there you'll probably will see on social media, but we'll definitely keep you updated. Right now, National Hurricane Center doesn't have any areas highlighted for development, uh, but I'm sure that will probably change over the next couple of days, and we will definitely continue to watch that. So again, that's the big story right now. We've got a whole bunch of heat going on, um, some storms out into the northwest and into the Ohio River Valley, and of course, uh, some very interesting things ongoing in the tropics, and all of that with the cherry on top, the potential of a cold front next week to help cool things down. So uh, pretty active out there, actually. Uh, especially for August standards, really a lot of different fronts that we are covering. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll stop rambling on. That's really all I've got for you today. So again, hope you had a great rest of your night and I will see you all tomorrow.